All right, then we'll go to the assistant superintendent's report. Good evening. I received a few questions on this report and I will try to weave the responses uh, into the report, but certainly happy to answer any questions as well. Um, my board report begins on board book page 21, and this will be providing financial information for uh, up through May 30th, 2020, which represents 92% of the fiscal year. Um, on board book page 21, this is a monthly summary report. And as you can see, the total operating revenue for the month was $468,791, with 38% coming from evidence-based funding, which is our state funding, 32% coming from a combined property tax and CPPRT, and 12% coming from federal and state grant reimbursement. Uh, the total operating expenditures for the month were $2,072,629, with 73% towards salary and benefits, and 10% towards special education tuition. Um, on the next page in board book, uh, the monthly financial statements begin. Uh, year to date in our operating funds, the district has received uh, $26,051,701 and has expended $24,417 in 134, excuse me. Uh, so right now we have a small surplus and this will be spent down next month as the district does not anticipate significant revenue for the remainder of the fiscal year, there still is a possibility that we will receive um, some state payments for categoricals, such as special education tuition and transportation. I checked on those today um, and they said scheduled. Uh, typically they come out every June. There was a question as to whether or not we'll receive these due to COVID-19. Um, so that's still up in the air, but that will be only our only significant revenue at this point. Um, on board book page 23, the summary of revenues shows that the district has received 98% of our revenue in the operating funds for this year. However, as I mentioned last board meeting, this is due to some um, unanticipated revenue sources, which I've listed below. Without this additional revenue, the district would have collected 97% of the budgeted revenue, which is roughly 2% lower than where we were uh, at this time last year. So there's a question about um, why we're a little bit lower in uh, budgeted revenue. Uh, certainly some of this is due to property tax uh, collections, uh, student fees, um, and state payments um, that I recently talked about. But we'll have some more concrete information obviously next month as we will be officially closed for fiscal year 20. Um, there was a question submitted about student fees from this year. We are still chasing $106,576 for this school year in unpaid student fees. Um, on the next page, uh, board book page 24, summary of expenditures shows that the district has spent 91% of the budgeted expenditures for this year. And the operating accounts in this amount is similar to this time last fiscal year. Um, and then the next few reports are in, um, monthly reports that I include. The first one is a statement of revenue and expenditures for the month, which lists all the revenues and expenditures for uh, each individual account and compares uh, budget to actual. And then also for your information, I've included the student activity summary report for the month of May. Um, and when you're looking at this, it's just important to remember that negative account balances represent positive fund balances for this account. And that concludes my report. Dr. Smithana, can you please repeat the outstanding fee balance? Because I don't know if I heard you right. Sure, it is $106,576. Okay, I did hear you correctly. Correct. I am trying to pull some information as to how that compares to previous fiscal years, um, but given the timing uh, and we had a short power outage here at RB, I wasn't able to get that information. So I don't know how that compares to previous fiscal years, but I'm working on that as well. Thank you. Well, if I might, by the end of the year, because of prom and other things, our fees would have been caught, pretty much caught up if anybody wanted to attend those end of the year activities, correct? Certainly that plays into it. We did, uh, we, students still need to pay their uh, statement off in full in order to receive an official transcript. Um, certainly for some students that doesn't hold as much weight as going to prom and having 
multiple graduation tickets. Um, but that, that certainly does help in collecting some of the student fees. But yeah, so that, Laura, certainly that has had an impact on, I think, the amount of money we've collected. Can I ask one last question? So because our last quarter of sports, had we collected any money then had to rebate monies? And we did have to, we did collect some money. Um, and so parents were given the option, we were gonna roll that over uh, to their, well, a couple of things. The first option is um, we would credit their account. So if they still owed us money for something else, mm -hmm. uh, we communicated families that that would be our first, our first line would be to credit their account and, uh, and to go that way. The second way would be to roll that over into the next fiscal year um, so that they would have a credit going into the following year. Um, also, parents, though, at any time had the ability to send us an email and say that they would like the full refund, and then we would process the refund um, and give them a check. Uh, we recognize that some families um, needed that money, um, and we wanted to be able to return that money to them. Where do we think we're going to end up? I think it's going to be really close. I think it depends on, I think it depends on the state payments. I do think, uh, based off what I saw in the system today, there is a chance we could receive our, our fourth state payment um, in June. And if that is the case, I do believe we, we have the possibility of finishing um, with a slight surplus or um, a very small deficit. So we might be actually better off if we had that fourth payment next year because that would help us next year we'll we will definitely money. be hurting financially yes just a thought again we would ask the state to hold paying its bills on time yeah. right so, diana you have, you have something yes. to say i'm sorry is there any way to um ask them to hold that payment till next July or until July or it's in process and that's the end of it. It's in, it's in process, I believe. Okay. It's a state system that's automated through it's called FRS. It goes out to every single school district in the state of Illinois where we've gotten, uh, where we um, have caught, a, I wouldn't say a break, but where it fell to an uh, upcoming fiscal year is if the 4th of July holiday fell, where the 4th of July holiday fell and how the treasurer's office was closed or how many people took vacation and when they decided to process that payment onto our actual book. Um, if it's been somewhat how it's been done, but if they, yeah. if they release it, um, you know, a week or two before June 30th, I think we're gonna, it's gonna apply to this year. Okay. All right, any uh, further questions for Kristen?